Welcome back everybody to Fitman Aquatics. So this is a video I meant to do last week, but I honestly just did not get around to it. I was on vacation. Um, I'm not going to make any more excuses for myself. I know I've been bad about it, but let's just get right into this build. So this is kind of the history of the 40 gallon that I used to have uh, when it was in the apartment uh, going through it. The original build you can see was with the Wallstead method. I used dirt as the bottom. Uh, I actually had a small mound of lava rock that I put in a bag with the tree on top of it, as you can see. I capped it off with sand. Um, I probably wouldn't do sand again if I were to ever do this. I'm not really sure I would ever try this again. Maybe down the road if I'm bored and have an extra tank lying around. But uh, for the most part, I would end up just doing the gra a large amount of gravel on top of it just so the plant roots could actually get down. I had this tank on the Shire from the Lord of the Rings. You can see the sand walking path, if you will. The dwarf hair grass on the left side that I was going to create as kind of the meadowy field. And then the hill with like the little hobbit houses on top of it with a little kind of nice moss tree that the hobbits would kind of sit under. And for those of you who don't know, the UG is, um, it's kind of a different plant. It's considered a bladderwort. So it actually is a carnivorous plant. And I didn't really know that it doesn't really like um, a lot of nutrients in its substrate. It actually would rather have a nutrient poor substrate and get things from the water column which was something I didn't learn until much later, and unfortunately that caused it to pretty much slowly die out. You can see I attached some weeping moss to the tree on the hill, and I attached it using actually pieces of a loofah that I zip-tied on there so that it would stay in place, and then those rhizomes or their little root system would attach to the tree. Unfortunately, when I took that off, a lot of the moss went with it. It had kind of grown through that loofah, but it did work relatively well. I probably should have just pulled it off a little bit earlier. All right, so now you can see I took the Lufa covering off. I had the dwarf hair grass on the left side is growing in really well. If you look closely, you can probably see that UG dying off. And I have my female beta. I tried a beta sorority here. I would definitely not recommend that. I will try and make another video later on as to why that didn't go so well. Um, I loved them. They were great. They were super nice. Uh, but in the long run, it is just not a good long term plan. Otherwise, at this point, the tank was going really, really well. The last picture wasn't too easy to see, and this one isn't real great, but I did add another tree in that back corner just to kind of give uh, another kind of slight focal point. I also had it on hand, and I decided, what the heck, let's add another tree just to kind of create more of that Shire effect. Now on the right side, you can probably notice uh, the UG was gone. I had put in pearlweed. I thought this was actually dwarf baby tears. Turns out it was pearlweed. I got misled on where I got this from. I'm not going to name names. But uh, definitely be careful of what you're buying and know what you're looking for. Uh, regardless of that, the pearlweed actually took off really well, which you guys will see here in a second. Um, otherwise, everything else in the tank was doing really well. The dwarf hair grass was growing great. I decided to put some stones in the middle of that sand because sand tends to start looking kind of grimy and dirty uh, after too much time. So instead of replacing it, I just put some river stones as kind of a cobblestone path there and just kind of ran with it. Now... From this top angle, you can see a bit more of how well that dwarf hair grass is growing and that river stone that really, I thought, turned out to work really well. Eventually, it did end up getting some algae on top of it, and that kind of added a nice weathered age look. 
Now at this point we're a few months in, the tank is looking really nice. I have added some more moss to the other tree on the other side. The dwarf hair grass is growing in really well. That pearl grass just took off like a weed. Um, it started covering that whole bottom. The other tree was growing in really nicely and I was pretty happy with how things were going at this point uh, in the 40 gallon. Probably notice I decided to attach a water pump. I got a Sun Sun water pump to help create some more flow, also to help push out my CO2. If you guys end up doing CO2, uh, this is a good method because that pump will actually kind of break up those bubbles and it helps dissolve it into the water much easier. Uh, but be careful of what plants you're pairing it with because it may have a tendency to want to try and rip those plants out of the ground if you have too powerful of a pump. This is just another look at the same time period. You probably noticed from the top angle here I was running two Penguin 20 gallon uh, bio wheels. I had the um, Sun Sun on the side there. So I had a lot of current going in, moving a lot of water, uh, which can be a good thing, especially to help keep that algae down. Uh, but it can also be a little challenging, especially for fish like betas who are used to living in puddles out in their natural environment. And they could struggle a little bit with all of that current. So, uh, real quick on the beta sorority. Um, I would never recommend anyone do it. It's it's very rewarding for a small period of time. It's really each fish has its own personality and you get very attached to them. But in the long run, in a span of like probably six months, I lost all of my female betas. And it was very heartbreaking. It's something that I still struggle with knowing that I had such a nice group of female betas that I had each individually handpicked out and... I had grown very attached to each one of them and so losing them slowly one after the other after the other uh, became very difficult for myself and my girlfriend to go through. So that's the main reason why I would basically not ever do that and I recommend no one ever try it because you're not really going to have success and if you do you are one of the very few. So with that said, these are the females. From the top left, I have Mako, Blue, Coppertone, Asami, Danny, Mrs. Bird. You guys probably can tell that Mrs. Bird had a very similar color to the Mr. Bird that I had at the time. And then I down here I had Blue, or yeah, I had Tilly, um... I think it was Blue and Suki. Uh, I had a few more that came after this, but all of these betas I lost in a very small window, probably in the span of three weeks, and I only had them for probably less than six months. There's some scientific reasons it probably doesn't work, but overall, very heartbreaking. So... This is probably when the tank started to go awry. I hadn't been doing my water changes. Uh, I was just not paying a lot of attention and algae started to fill up. You probably can't see very well, but that tree started to get covered in clodo, which is a type of algae. Uh, I started to see bits of algae inside of the dwarf hair grass. Meanwhile, the pearl weed was growing crazy. It was looking very good. Um, I... Looking back at it, I necessarily pr probably should have just left the algae. It didn't look uh, terribly pleasing to the extreme aquascaper, but for the kind of laid-back naturalist aquarist, it actually did provide the look or the feel that I was going for in this tank. So, overall, I kind of regret my decisions um, that I would make here in a couple of months. So you can really see from this angle that the tree is just covered in a different, or in that clado, 
you can't really even see the moss anymore and the tree in the back actually was growing some of the moss but I could definitely start to see some of that clotto taking hold in there and it was starting to appear in small patches around the purrweed uh, but again I kind of like the way it looked and so I just didn't really do anything. I was being a lazy aquarist and not keeping on top of my water changes, which is really important. Uh, I wasn't dosing my tank. I would just kind of sporadically dose it, which is really not good. You got to have a good routine when keep trying to keep up with these plants. And for the amount of plants I had, I definitely wasn't dosing enough nutrients to keep them on top of this whole algae outbreak that I was getting. On this picture you can really see it, um, that Clodophora, or Clodo for short, is kind of that stringy, puffy looking green stuff. And you can see it in the corner as it looks a little wavy on that tree, and then it's just very puffy, almost like green cotton candy on top of the tree on the hill. And you can even see in the dwarf hair grass, or at least I can, um, start some like kind of brownish yellow looking patches, which is some of that um, that algae and disease setting into the dwarf hair grass, which was because they were so tightly compact and they weren't getting a lot of airflow through them, which can be a problem with dwarf hair grass if you just kind of let it run rampant and you don't keep up with your trimmings. Now, not long after this, I decided I was so frustrated with the algae that I had let grow that I kind of tried to severely attack it, and I, the tank started, just looked awful afterwards. Now, this was a decision I kind of regret because... I easily could have just left it. The algae does the exact same job as plants, taking nutrients out of the water. It does it better than plants, and so it probably would have been just fine. The tank would have done great. Um, I had a pneumonia spike after I ripped all that algae up. I think that was part of the issue that contributed to a lot of the death of my female so early on. And it really did not look good afterwards, so I was not happy with the end result. Even though when the algae was there, I was pretty happy with just looking at it from afar because it did give that kind of Shire Hobbit look that I wanted the whole time through. So this is just me basically saying that algae is not all necessarily bad. If you're a real intense aquascaper, yes, you don't want it in your tank, but if you're kind of a normal hobbyist who just wants a nice looking tank, if the algae looks aesthetically pleasing to you, keep it. Don't worry about it too much. It's going to actually help your fish and it's going to help your tank to keep everything maintained and all of those ammonia, all of those uh, nitrates down in the water column very well, even better than plants do in many cases. Well everybody, today's finally the day. We are going to break down this 40 gallon. We're going to break down the quarantine tank. You, I kind of already got started, but you can see Mainly just pulled a bunch of stuff out of the quarantine tank, all the fake plants and decorations that I had. Turned all the heaters off. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrangle some fish and hopefully that works out well and then I'll be breaking the rest of this down. So stay. I will kind of be giving updates as it happens. Alright, so quick update. Um, kind of moved everything out. Here's the setup I got going. Drained everything down. This 10 gallons all packed up, ready to go. I got all my fishes hanging out inside of their containers. I got some guys in there. I don't know if you can see them too well. And then we got some inverts, some other stuff in there. So, you know, that's, uh, I drained all the water out. I removed those rhizo mats. I tried to collect all the pebbles, terracotta pots, all that stuff. I did, um, I did happen to move some of that gravel. You probably can't see it too well, but there's, there's some substrate down there that I probably will use for another scape. Um, but everything else, since I, it, it is a dirted tank, I'm pretty much going to try and just chuck. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, 
I will let you know when this is hopefully a finished product and successful.